Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel GSA PUC Mysuru. This is the first session of the first chapter that is introduction to electronics from the first PUC electronics syllabus. In this chapter we are going to see the definition of electronics and the development of electronics that is how the different electronic devices was invented and who invented all those devices. Apart from that we are also going to see the applications of this electronics in different fields like in the defense field or in the medical fields etc. So let us get started. This electronics is derived from the word electron mechanics. Electron mechanics. Electronics. So this electronics is derived from the word electron mechanics. Electronics is nothing but the science and technology which deals with the study of motion of electrons, motion of electrons in gas, vacuum and semiconductor devices. That is electrons is nothing but all about how these electrons will behave or how these electrons will move from one place to another place in gas, vacuum or the semiconductor devices which serves as the base for the electrical signals. So what is this electrical signals? Electrical signals is nothing but the information which is transferred from one place to another place either in the form of current, voltage, frequency or in the form of electromagnetic waves. So these waves carry some of the information which has to be transferred from one place to the other place. So we have already studied about this semiconductor devices in our school level. Solids are broadly classified into three types that is conductors, insulators and semiconductors. Conductors on the head those are the substances which allow current to pass through. Insulators which does not allow current to pass through. Coming to the semiconductor, its conductivity lies between a conductor and an insulator. That is, it sometimes behaves as a conductor and some other time it behaves as an insulator. We are going to study in detail about these semiconductors in the next chapters. There was a scientist by name J. J. Thomson. J. J. Thomson. That is Joseph John Thomson conducted an experiment using the vacuum tubes or the cathode ray tubes. In this uh, experiment, he came across with tiny particles which are having negative charge and these negative charge particles are now known as the electrons. So these electrons was invented by this scientist that is J. J. Thomson in the year 1897. So what is this cathode ray tube or what is this vacuum tube on the head? A cathode ray tube is nothing but a glass envelope in which all of the gas is removed present inside the envelope. That is it's nothing but a simple glass container. Inside the glass container vacuum will be present and within that glass envelope cathode rays will be allowed to pass through. In the meanwhile, it will produce a luminous image on the fluorescent screen. In the early days, we were using the television and the computer monitor which were made up of these CRT tubes that is cathode ray tubes. But nowadays, this CRT is being replaced by LEDs and LCD. So, J.J. Thomson in the year 1897 invented the subatomic particle which was carrying a negative charge and that subatomic particle was named as electron. Electronics principally deals with the communication of information and data handling. Communication of information and the head daga, whenever you want to transfer the information or whenever you want to send the information from one place to another place, we are doing that with the help of electronic devices that can either be your mobile phone or your computer or your radio system. So, one this jaga in the in on the jaga can information na transmit maadbe we 
seek the help of electronic devices. data handling So whenever you want to transmit the data from one place to another place, the data must be safe and secure. The data must not be leaked in the mean in the middle of the path. That is one the janga in the innon jaga kikals bekare. The data must be very much safe and secure. So these electronic devices make sure that the data is handled in a safe and secure manner. So these electronic devices play a major role in uh, communication that is uh, exchanging of information as well as data handling. And these electronics are broadly classified into two types. One is the analog electronics and the other one is digital electronics. Analog electronics is nothing but the system which is dealing with the continuously varying signals. That is a system dealing with a continuously varying signals and the other digital signals or digital electronics and the other a system dealing with only two different levels one is zero the other one is one that is zero and if I am going to consider this as the line so this is the zero the information whereas this is the information one but here in analog electronics the information is continuously changing if I am going to consider this as the timeline and this as the voltage or the current. If I am going to consider this as a graph where the time period is plotted on the x axis and voltage or the current is plotted on the y axis, then we are going to get a graph like this. That is, this waveform is having both positive half cycles as well as negative half cycles. In the sense, this voltage, if I am going to consider this as a voltage, this voltage is starting from zero and increasing very slowly and it is reaching a maximum point let me call that as v max after reaching this v max again it is it has started to decrease and it reached a point where its value is equal to zero from zero again it is decreasing reaching a least maximum point and let me call that least maximum point as v minimum from the V minimum again it started increasing. So this analog electronics is nothing but a system which deals with a continuously varying signals. And the digital electronics nearly it deals with the signals only of two different states one is zero the other one is one. Here I am using the word what is called as system. What is this analog system or what is this digital system on the head? It is nothing but a simple device in which I am going to give some input and obtain some of the output. Yelli output barata atwa yava system ge atwa yava device ge nani input kota ga output barata that entire devices can be called as a system. Usually systems and the head daga what comes to our mind is a simple computer that is a desktop aro agir bodo atwa laptop aro agir bodo but even a mobile phone can be considered as a system. Even a radio device can be considered as a system. Even a television can be considered as a system. Because for television and the head daga, whenever we are going to give an AC supply, that is going to produce an audio signal as well as a video signal. So AC signal is the input and it is producing two types of output signal that is audio as well as video. So any devices in which output is produced, whenever I am going to give the input is called as a system. Analog electronics and the hair, analog electronics deals with the system in which a continuously varying signal is applied. Digital electronics, it is nothing but a system in which only two different levels of the signals is given. One is zero, the other one is one. Clear? Until 1960, 1960 thanka. This electronics was considered as a part of electrical engineering but with the advancement of the electronic devices the electronics was emerged as a separate engineering branch but with the furthermost advancement in the electronic devices we are having sub branches in the electronics like computer science, information technology, 
uh, communication engineering and so on. We know many of the electronic devices that can either be a simple computer or a simple mobile phone. So, electronics engineer will be able to understand the functioning of these particular devices and he will be having the capability to improvise these devices according to the need of the users. I have already explained the scope of electrical engineering and electronics engineering in the introduction session of our first PUC. If you have not seen that video, please go through that video. Now let us discuss about the development of electronics. The very first device which was invented is the vacuum tube diodes or the vacuum tube devices. It began its origin in the year 1904 when the scientist by name J. A. Fleming that is John Ambrose Fleming invented a device which was named as the vacuum tube diodes which had only two terminals, di stands for two. So, this vacuum tube diodes contained two terminals, one was named as anode, the other one was named as cathode. In the year 1906, another scientist by name Lee D. Forrest invented a device which was named as vacuum tube triodes. Here, tri stands for three. So, this vacuum tube triodes contains three different terminals. One was called as the filament, which was also named as cathode. The other one was called as the anode or the plate. And the third terminal was named as the grid. So, J. A. Fleming invented this vacuum tube diodes whereas Lee D. Forrest invented this vacuum tube triodes. The J. A. Fleming demonstrated an experiment to convert the alternating signal into a direct current that is an alternating signal into a direct current whereas this vacuum tube triodes was the very first amplifying devices. Amplifying devices and the amplifier is nothing but a simple circuit which is used to strengthen the weak signals. That is, if I am going to consider this itself as an amplifier circuit, if the input signal is this much, then the output of this amplifier will be very very large. That is, in order to strengthen the weak input signal, we are going to use a circuit what is called as an amplifier. So, vacuum tube triodes are the very first amplifying devices. These vacuum tube triodes are usually used in television that is TV or the computer monitors. Uh, and also X-ray tubes, but these days even the TV screens as well as the monitor screens uh, have been replaced by the LED screens or the LCD screens. So, the vacuum tube devices nally, vacuum tube diodes was invented by the J. A. Fleming that is John Ambrose Fleming in the year 1904 and in the year 1906 Lee D. Forrest invented the vacuum tube triodes. And vacuum tube diodes was used to convert the alternating signal into a direct current. And vacuum tube triodes used Markundu, Lady Forest amplified the signals. Now we will move on to the next type of electronic devices that is the semiconductor devices. These semiconductor devices are nothing but the electronic components that exploit the electronic properties of semiconductor materials like silicon and germanium. Silicon and germanium are the semiconductor materials which are most widely used. Silicon and germanium. Silicon is denoted by Si and germanium is denoted by Ge. Out of these two that is silicon and germanium, silicon is most widely used semiconductor device because this silicon is having the capability to withstand high temperature and it is also having the ability to withstand high voltage. 
The other advantage is it is most abundantly available in nature. So this silicon is having the capability to withstand high voltage as well as high temperature. Semiconductor devices have replaced these vacuum diodes or vacuum triodes. There are more advantage of these semiconductor devices compared to vacuum tube devices. That is vacuum tube diodes are agar bodo or vacuum tube triodes are agar bodo. And those advantages are these semiconductor devices will occupy less space and they are more reliable and they are less power consuming. So these three are the major advantages of these semiconductor devices compared to the vacuum tube diodes. And there are two terminal semiconductor devices along with the three terminal semiconductor devices. Some of the two terminal semiconductor devices are a simple PN junction diode or a simple LED that is the light emitting diode, a photo cell or a Scott key diode or a tunnel diode. All these are some of the examples of two terminal semiconductor devices. Even this will be studied in the next chapters. And another major uh, uh, example for two terminal semiconductor devices, a Zener diode. Along with this, there are a three terminal semiconductor devices like uh, transistors which can also be named as BJT that is bipolar junction transistor or the MOSFET MOSFET and the metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor or the SCR that is silicon controlled rectifier which is also called as thyristors or a simple IGBT that is insulated gate bipolar transistors. So these are some of the examples for three terminal semiconductor devices whereas these are some of the examples for two terminal semiconductor devices. So out of these two semiconductor materials that is silicon and germanium, silicon is more advantageous compared to germanium because it can withstand high temperature and high voltages. And these semiconductor devices can be manufactured as a single discrete component or in the form of an IC. Discrete component and then only one single device. On the diode and the head of one transistor ashte. What is this IC and the head IC contains up to two or billion number of these semiconductor devices placed on the surface of the uh, silicon wafer we are going to call that as a silicon substrate or a wafer and that will be interconnected to form a single IC that is an integrated circuit. So these semiconductor devices is available either in the form of a single discrete device or in the form of an integrated device or an integrated circuit. Now let us discuss about the next type of electronic device what is called as a transistor. These transistors are basically called as the bipolar junction transistor in short which is called as BJT. This transistor was invented in the year 1948 by three scientists Bardeen, Britain and Shockley and these three scientists were awarded the Nobel Prize for this invention in the year 1956 in the year 1956 and this was the first Nobel Prize awarded for the engineers in the year 1956 but in the year 1954 the silicon transistors were manufactured but before that the germanium transistors was used but this silicon transistor is even more advantageous compared to germanium transistor because this silicon transistor is having a capability to withstand a temperature of 200 degrees centigrade whereas this germanium is having a capability to withstand a temperature of only 75 degrees centigrade. So these days all of the transistors is manufactured using silicon rather than germanium. Let me stop this session at this point. In this session, we learned about the definition of electronics and also 
the different inventions of the electronic devices done by the different scientists. In the next session, I'll be coming with some more electronic devices. Thank you.